Welcome to the worst recent trades in NBA history. We are working with a seven year window here, so let's waste no time and start with the Atlanta Hawks who fumbled horrendously when they drafted Luka Doncic with the number three pick in the 2018 draft and traded him for Trey Young. Trey and DeJounte Murray have recently struggled to fit together as the Hawks went from the Eastern Conference Finals in 2021 to out of the playoffs in 2024. With Luka, Atlanta would not only have a franchise player that is about to make his fifth straight first team all NBA, but also, it is very possible that in the 2021 Eastern Conference Finals against the Bucks, Luka could have put them over the top as the Hawks did lose in six games, and from there, the Bucks won the championship. So Luka could have been a title winner at the age of 21, and Atlanta could have had their first ring since 1958 with a franchise player carrying them for the foreseeable future. The Boston Celtics have made some incredible moves recently. They have locked in a title contender for this current season and the near future. However, their team could have been even better if they had not traded their 30th pick in Desmond Bain along with Ennis Cantor in a move that was made to open up cap space to sign Tristan Thompson. Thompson spent just one year in Boston while Desmond Bain averaged over 18 points per game in his second season and in year four he averaged 23.7 points, 5.5 assists, and 4.4 rebounds per game. As we know, Boston has had their playoff struggles as of late. Adding Bain to the Celtics young core could have put them over the top in the last few playoffs and with with their current team, it could have made them truly unstoppable. The Brooklyn Nets went all in on a big three of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden, but easily. The Harden trade was the most costly of this failed experiment. As we know, this big three did not work at all together. There was turmoil. They all ended up getting traded to different teams. But in order to get James Harden, the Nets gave up seven first round picks to the Rockets. And with this, they do not outright own their first round pick until 2028. A horrible situation for a a bad roster to be in as what are you even tanking for to give another team a great pick on top of this it was james harden who was the first to request out of this big three the move that broke them up and turned them from a possible title contender to now a bottom dweller in the east and harden's trade demand ended up landing the nets ben simmons a man considered to be the worst contract in basketball with brooklyn simmons played just 15 games this year averaged 6.1 points per game and made 37.8 million dollars just doing quick math, that's over $2 million a game. At least when trading Durant away, the Nets got Mikhail Bridges and several of the Suns' future draft picks. Harden cost them their draft pick future and only got them a salary cap killer. In the 2018 draft, the Charlotte Hornets had a choice. Keep Shea Gilgis Alexander, an MVP candidate in 2024, who has become a true franchise star for the Oklahoma City Thunder, or trade him for Miles Bridges, a man who has brought them disgrace through his off-court actions. The Hornets met this one up plain and simple. Shea looks like he will be a superstar franchise guy for years to come. The pairing of LaMelo and Shea may have worked. It may not have worked. Worst case scenario, LaMelo Ball would then become a tremendous trade asset. What we do know for certain is that having both of them on their roster would have put the franchise in a much better place. To me, this mistake has gone under the radar, but could end up being one of the most costly mistakes of the last decade of any team. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Video. With basketball season starting to heat up, it is time to turn our attention to the sport that matters the most, and I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook to hook you guys up as throughout the playoffs, all new customers who bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly, instantly. If you've already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can get a no sweat bet. That means you get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay does not hit. Max reward limits apply, and if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in in all the fun with DraftKings. DraftKings Daily Fantasy. So make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, again, bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I'll say, just an incredible deal. That's promo code Corzemba, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. Speaking of the worst trades in recent history though, at the trade deadline of the 2021 season, the Chicago Bulls attempted to speed up their rebuild and gave up Wendell Carter Jr., who was their seventh pick in the 2018 draft and also their 2021 and 2023 first round picks to the Magic for Nikola Vucevic. Vuce was an all-star in Orlando, but for the Bulls, he has just been above average as Chicago, even with Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, have never pushed to the top of the East and were in the play-in game this year. Meanwhile, Orlando, 
who was in a much worse position and was supposed to be rebuilding as this trade was supposed to push Chicago to the top of the Eastern Conference, has become one of the NBA's biggest success stories themselves. Wendell Carter Jr. has averaged a solid double-double for the Magic as a dependable center. The 2023 pick Orlando got turned into the 11th pick in the draft in Jet Howard. Results remain to be seen with him. Most devastating for the Bulls, though, is that the 2021 pick they gave up became Franz Wagner. Franz is one of the NBA's most underrated young stars as he is the second best player on a Magic team that finished fifth in the East this year. Wagner this season averaged 19.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 3.7 assists per game. He is just 22 years old, and he's a versatile 6'10 wing slash big. Essentially everything you would want in a modern day young player. He would currently be the best prospect, maybe the best player on Chicago's roster. This was a major fail. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, did Kyrie Irving demand a trade away from them? Yes. He even went as far as to say in the 2017 offseason that if he was not traded, he would get surgery that would force him to miss the entire 2018 year. LeBron at the time was reportedly very hurt and shocked by all this news. Kyrie, though, wanted to play for his own team and did not like the fact that the media was treating him like LeBron's son. Kristen called LeBron a great father after the Chicago game. What? what? A great father? Oh, a great father. father. Oh, I thought he's... Oh, I'm bad. I, got, I interpreted that, that completely wrong. I thought you said he was a great father to him. I was like, what? So yeah. what type of parental role has he played for you and your teammates? Oh, okay. So you... Uh, I have one father. I... That's my dad, Dredrick Irving. The trade the Cavs made, though, could not have been worse for Cleveland, as after sorting through several trade packages, they landed on Isaiah Thomas, who went from averaging 30 points per game to the Celtics to becoming a huge negative for the Cavs. Isaiah's usage rate in a contract year still remained near the top of the NBA, but when he was on the court with Cleveland, his team's offense ranked 24th in the NBA and their defense ranked dead last. Cleveland would actually cut bait with Isaiah after he played just 15 games with the team. Any other package for a prime Kyrie Irving would have given the Cavs a much better chance at a title in LeBron's final year. Maybe an incredible deal would have even kept him on the Cavs instead of seeing him go to the Lakers. The Dallas Mavericks give us one of the smaller trades in this video. Keep in mind, we are doing a seven-year window, so not everyone is going to have a horrible trade. And many would think that the Mavericks' worst trade would be Kristaps Porzingis. The thing is, though, that trade got them Spencer Dinwiddie, and Spencer Dinwiddie got them Kyrie Irving. So instead, I will say the Mavs' worst recent trade was a a small but impactful one, as when Dallas moved Seth Curry, they gave up a much needed three point shooter who could have really helped them in the playoffs, especially in 2022 during their Western Conference Finals run when they ran out of gas. In that series, Seth could have given them the extra three point shooting they needed, as that was when Seth was in his absolute prime. Instead, Seth went on to play really well for the Sixers, and he also became a main piece non negotiable in the trade for James Harden, which allowed the Sixers to get out of Ben Simmons' contract. Again, a smaller trade though, for the the Denver Nuggets, we have a very simple trade. In the 2017 draft, the Nuggets took Donovan Mitchell and immediately had an all-star guard to pair with Nikola Jokic, who was already on the roster. Instead of keeping him, Denver moved him for Trey Lyles and Tyler London, two players who have been completely irrelevant. Meanwhile, Mitchell would become the biggest steal of this draft, averaging over 20 points per game as a rookie while leading the Jazz to a first-round win over the Thunder in his rookie season, while Mitchell himself outplayed an all-NBA level Russell Westbrook. Obviously, everything has worked out for Denver as they did win the 2023 NBA championship with Jamal Murray, but it would be interesting to go back and see what would happen if they had made the right move during this draft. In January of 2018, the Detroit Pistons made a move that simply made no sense, trading away Tobias Harris in a first round pick that would become Miles Bridges for a past his prime Blake Griffin. Harris has proven to be a steady, solid player for the 76ers. Bridges was good until his off-court drama, but most importantly, at this point in time, Detroit should have been aiming for a re rebuild. Whenever a team just puts themselves in no man's land, whenever they go out and do not commit to a rebuild and instead trade for a Blake Griffin type, it just delays the inevitable. The most the Pistons got out of this Blake Griffin trade was a 41 and 41 record and a playoff appearance in 2019. They then ended up waving Blake and have averaged less than 19 wins a year in their last five seasons. During their dynasty years, it seemed like the Golden State Warriors could do no wrong. Since then though, it seems like they have made several costly mistakes, including drafting James Wise 
Wiseman. In terms of trades though, I understand Jordan Poole gets a lot of heat on the Washington Wizards, but trading Jordan Poole, who was an asset at the time for sure, for Chris Paul has to be the worst trade that Golden State has made recently. If the Warriors had just kept Poole, they would have had at least a very good bench scorer for them this season. Golden State ended up benching Klay Thompson, so maybe they would have even had a pretty solid starter. As also, we have to remember that Jordan Poole was a big time contributor of their 2022 finals run. I know his stock is low right now, but that man earned his contract through helping the Warriors win a championship. Instead, Golden State traded him for a 37 year old Chris Paul, an undersized point guard who had no chance at all of fitting in with Steph Curry, and he did not. Trading away a player just because another player on your roster hit him is tough. And here's Chris Paul again for the Houston Rockets as there was nothing good at all about this trade. Houston bet that when trading away Chris Paul, that a combo of James Harden and Russell Westbrook could salvage their team and keep them from going into pure rebuild mode. Harden and Russ, understandably to us all, did not work out in any way. And with this trade, Houston is likely to give up both their 2024 and 2026 first round picks to the Oklahoma City Thunder as they only have top four protections on them. Meanwhile, Russ, after just one season with this team, was traded for John Wall, who Houston paid to not play with their young core. They literally told him to stay home away from their roster. A very confusing turn of events as if Houston had just leaned into the rebuild one season earlier, they would be better set up for their future as they wouldn't owe their draft picks to the Thunder. The Indiana Pacers have made a lot of solid moves recently to reposition themselves as a playoff team. So this is a bit of a deep dive, but we are going to find the worst move in trading away Karis LeVert. Karis is at the very least a nice rotation piece slash fringe starter. He could be helping the Pacers this year. Instead, he averaged 14 points per game for the Cavaliers, a direct rival of the Pacers. The man the Pacers got back for Karis LeVert was Ricky Rubio, who did not even play on Indiana after this trade took place. And the pick they got was just the 26th pick in the 2023 draft. LeVert is also young enough where he could be helping them for years to come. The Los Angeles Clippers are one of those teams that could be on the brink of destruction. If the Clippers are able to keep winning with their current core and bring in some big free agents, this trade will not go down as one of the worst in NBA history, but it does have the chance to. To be fair, if the Clippers did not trade Shea Gilgis Alexander for Paul George, then they would not have gotten Kawhi Leonard as that was the only reason that Kawhi was going to come to LA. But also to be fair, the current result of this trade is that the Clippers have done absolutely nothing of note with Kawhi and PG. Meanwhile, Shea has led a young Thunder Corps to the top seed in the Western Conference. There is not a single NBA fan who would not agree that the Clippers would just immediately trade right now Paul George for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea is just 25 years old. He was first team all NBA last season and the Clippers still owe several first round draft picks to the Thunder after this trade, meaning that if all does go wrong in a tank season, they are just going to be giving the Thunder an incredible asset. Sticking with LA, after winning the championship in 2020, the Los Angeles Lakers lost in the first round of the 2021 playoffs to the Phoenix Suns and panicked. The Suns made a run all the way to the NBA Finals and making a trade in a panic state is almost always a guaranteed sign for bad things to come. The Russell Westbrook trade to the Lakers would prove to be a disaster. Russell and LeBron seemingly hated playing with each other slash just hated each other. The tension was almost awkward to watch and the results spoke for themselves. In 2022 with Russ, the Lakers won just 33 games and took a massive leap backwards as Contavious Caldwell Pope emerged as a key player in the Denver Nuggets championship run. Kyle Kuzma has established himself as a very solid wing scorer. We knew that when the Lakers traded him and with the Wizards, he averaged over 21 points per game in 2023 and over 22 points per game in 2024. It is safe to say that just standing still and not making a panicked rush trade would have given them a lot more flexibility for the last few LeBron seasons. Instead, as it stands now, the Lakers future with LeBron is anything but certain. The Memphis Grizzlies have fallen on very tough times recently. However, before the John Morant situation took place, the Grizzlies were the number two seed in the West and very well could have made a run all the way to the title if they had not made a huge mistake. While Steven Adams was a dependable center for this roster, Jonas Valanciunas at this point in their careers was simply just a better player. Jonas has averaged more points per game and rebounds per game than Adams every season since this trade. He spreads the floor more than Adams does. He's currently playing at a much higher level than Adams as Adams is looking like he's about to be out of the NBA soon. And to top this off, Trey Murphy the third has become a great player and piece for the Pelicans as well. As a young player in this league, Trey averaged almost 15 points per game in 2023 and in 2024. Memphis could use Trey alone to go along with their younger core. Valanciunas may have swung the needle in the 2022 Western Conference semifinals 
finals where the Grizzlies lost in six games to a Warriors team that, if we remember, had no real center to guard him. The Miami Heat have been very solid with their trade history in recent years. So that means with the Heat, we're going to get a bit nitpicky. In March of 2021, the Heat traded Kelly Olynyk in a package for Victor Oladipo as they were fed up with Olynyk's inconsistency. They also hoped Oladipo would tap back into his all-star play. Heat fans do not like Olynyk. I'm sure a Heat fan watching this is commenting hate right now on this video. However, directly after this trade, Kelly did average 19 points per game to end the year. As for Victor, he would play in just four games after this trade for the Heat in the 2021 season. Then in 2022, in 15 playoff games, there is no doubt he was a negative. He shot under 37% from the field with 1.7 turnovers to only 2.1 assists. So while Olenek was certainly streaky, while he certainly had his flaws, he was also a stretch big that at least spread the court and the Heat made their 2020 finals run with him as a key role player. Olenek even had 24 points against the Lakers in a finals game. So again, maybe this is nitpicky, but also the Heat have been 10 out of 10 with their trades and Oladipo just was not good with this team. When the Milwaukee Bucks moved Dante DiVincenzo, they were expecting surge of Baca to give them a lift as a veteran presence for a playoff run. They traded a young player with a bright future for a hopeful veteran presence? To be honest, this trade seemed questionable at the time, and Serge was a net negative for the Bucks, averaging just 3.7 minutes per game in the 2022 playoffs, and in 2023, he would play in just 16 games for Milwaukee and give them zero playoff games. Dante has emerged as a key piece for the New York Knicks, who became a two-seed in the Eastern Conference this season ahead of the Bucks, as Dante with his high energy play, finished the year averaging 15.5 points per game and also finished the year ninth in steal percentage. It is no question that Milwaukee would be very happy to have Dante on their current roster as they've been on just a downward trend since winning the 2021 finals, winning just 49 games this season despite the addition of Damian Lillard. On paper, the Andrew Wiggins trade for the Minnesota Timberwolves looks horrible. Minnesota gave up both Wiggins, who went on to become an all-star starter for the Warriors, and a pick that became Jonathan Kaminga, who looks like the Warriors' most promising young prospect for essentially D'Angelo Russell, who is no longer on their team. If you were to ask Timberwolves fans about this trade, though, they'd say good riddance to Wiggins, that he played with no heart in Minnesota, that this was long overdue. So objectively, I will still say this is the worst trade that they've made. You could decide for yourself, though, as Minnesota does have another bad trade for us. In the 2019 draft, Minnesota gave up Cam Johnson in order to get Jared Culver. Culver has not had much of an NBA career at all. While there is no doubt that Cam Johnson would currently help out the Minnesota Minnesota Timberwolves roster as he is a dependable three-point shooter and scorer who averaged 13.4 points per game this season in under 28 minutes a game. The New Orleans Pelicans were in a rough spot with Drew Holiday as he did want to be traded to a contender. However, looking at the trade package they got back for Drew, a man who would go on to be a vital piece of the Bucks championship run and is now so good for the Boston Celtics that Boston gave him a four-year $135 million extension, it's hard not to pick this as the Pelicans' worst recent trade. If the Bucks completely fall apart and somehow these picks become valuable, I guess this trade could be salvaged, but here we essentially have an all-star traded for Eric Bledsoe, who did nothing on the Pelicans roster and was out of the league two seasons later, and Steven Adams, who was already past his prime and did not contribute significantly. So yes, the Pels were in a position where they felt like they needed to move Drew, but that is the sign of a bad front office. Either move him when you could get him for great value, or you get this. The fact that the Pelicans got no young talent back for Drew Holiday, and that no one on this trade is still on their roster right now is very tough, especially when the Pelicans are currently trying to contend themselves. The New York Knicks have easily one of the worst trades on this list, as yes, Chris Hubs Porzingis has bounced around, he has gone from Dallas to Washington and now to Boston, but in Boston he has become one of the biggest storylines in the NBA as he is clearly a dominant third option for a team that ran away with the Eastern Conference Finals and could very well win the entire NBA championship. New York traded Porzingis because at the time he had some drama and did not feel fit in well with the culture that included Carmelo, Anthony, and Phil Jackson, which sounds like a fever dream type statement, but it's true. New York chose to cut ties with Porzingis and instead chose to bet it all on essentially the potential of Dennis Smith Jr., who they could not have been more wrong about. Dennis would go from averaging 14.7 points per game with the Knicks in 2019 to just 5.5 in 2020. And it's not like the Knicks needed to tank to get into the position they are currently in. They did get a number three draft pick and RJ Barrett, but RJ did not work out for the team, and they ended up moving him for an underwhelming trade package. New York has instead built their success
success by signing free agents such as Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, creating their core through free agent moves and trades that now has them near the top of the East in some alternate universe with Porzingis being that top third option that he is now in Boston, maybe the Knicks could have been at the top of the East themselves. The Oklahoma City Thunder are at the top of the Western Conference and have emerged as the best young team in the NBA. As the Thunder have a big three young core in Shea Gilgis Alexander, Chet Holmgren, and Jalen Williams. That does not mean though that with all of the draft picks the Thunder have hoarded that they made zero mistakes. In fact, they may have made a massive one. As in 2021, the Thunder drafted Alfred and Sangoon and ended up trading him for more first round picks instead of keeping a man who has become one of the most promising young players in basketball. At just 21 years old for the Rockets this season, Sangoon averaged 21.1 points, 9.3 rebounds, and 5.3 assists per game and was 17th in the league in box score plus minus. So while the Thunder are certainly doing fine without him, the fact that Chet is so versatile and that Sangoon is such a great passer really makes you think if the Thunder could have even been better with an even brighter future if they had kept Sangoon. The Orlando Magic are now a legitimate playoff team and with young stars in Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, the Magic could definitely use a top tier glue guy slash veteran such as Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon's time in Orlando was very underwhelming, but this trade was even worse. The Magic helped the Denver Nuggets win a championship as Gordon played a massive role for Denver in their championship run and in return Orlando got RJ Hampton who is off their roster and averaged 1.3 points per game this season and Gary Harris who is currently out of the NBA. Gordon has proven he is a high level starter on a championship caliber roster that is a player you do not sleep on and the type of return they got back for him is simply awful. Philadelphia 76ers could have re-signed Jimmy Butler. He was all for staying with the team until he heard that the front office was openly asking people if they thought they could control him. Jimmy took extreme exception and offense to this, understandably, stating that he is a grown man, no one needs to control him, and also, who is Philly to be asking that question as Ben Simmons at the time was refusing to practice his jump shot. So, Philadelphia decided to trade away Jimmy and the return they got was basically nothing. Josh Richardson played just one year for the team and the 76ers dug their own grave here. As if they had kept Jimmy, they would have had the lead ball handler they needed in order to reach the deeper rounds of the playoffs from 2020 to this current day, but instead, they bet on Ben Ben Simmons, which of course was one of the worst bets you could ever make, and even worse, Philly's best chance at a title during the Trust the Process era currently was in 2019 with Jimmy Butler when they lost in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals to the Raptors on a Kawhi Leonard buzzer beater. The Raptors would go on to win the championship that season. Joel Embiid has never played in the NBA Finals. Jimmy, since this trade, has made the Finals twice in Miami. Just a bad decision by Philly's front office that has cost them dearly. The Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal trades for the Phoenix Suns could also cost them dearly as they owe all of their first round picks to other teams for the foreseeable future. But as for the here and now, we find Desmond Bain pop up again. As in 2019, the Suns gave away the pick that would become Desmond Bain for Aaron Baines and Ty Jerome. This trade just did not need to happen. Both Baines and Jerome did absolutely nothing for the Suns whatsoever. If Phoenix did keep their pick and landed Bain, they would not have needed to trade for Bradley Beal. They would not have needed to mortgage their future even more. And also they very well could have had a player that put them over the top in their recent playoff failures. Maybe we would have been looking at a Phoenix Suns championship, but instead, they gave away this pick for essentially nothing, and it became a pick that really ended up biting them. The Portland Trailblazers could have moved CJ McCollum much earlier than they did, which is what makes this trade even worse than it became. Whenever you have a situation where you could have traded a player a few years earlier and instead are trading him now for a next to nothing trade package, how do we not blame the front office for that? We do blame them. The biggest problem with this specific trade is that the Blazers moved CJ and essentially got nothing of good worth in return. Josh Hart would be the best player in this trade for them. He's playing on the Knicks though. Nikhil Alexander-Walker was seen as a promising young player, but he is underwhelmed and he's no longer on the roster. Didi Luzada is no longer in the NBA. The best part about this trade for the Blazers is seemingly that it's allowed them to enter tank mode, but at the very least, if you are going to be tanking, you'd like to get some young assets back for a near all-star type in CJ McCollum. The Blazers failed to do that. If they had traded him years earlier, they very well could have found a much better fit for Damian Lillard. They could have had a roster that pushed for a title during the Damian Lillard era. With the Sacramento Kings, I know this is going to be one of the most controversial trades on this list. With a seven year time frame though, there's going to be some controversy. And when the Kings decided to trade Tyrese Halliburton along with Buddy Heald in a package that centered around Demonis Sabonis, they did so with one goal in mind, to finally make the playoffs. As to be fair, from 2007 to 2022, the Sacramento Sacramento Kings racked 
racked up the longest playoff drought in NBA history. So yes, just making the playoffs after this trade is a win, I guess. However, we're back to that dreaded, dreaded middle ground again. With this trade, the Kings gave away Halliburton, who has emerged on the Indiana Pacers as a true franchise player. And now they are locked into a duo of De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis. The Kings are not good enough to compete for a title. They ended up playing in the playing game this season. They're also not bad enough to get top draft picks to help their roster. Halliburton has raised Indiana's record from 25 wins before he was there to 47 wins this season with a playoff berth. There's no doubt that when Sacramento traded him, Halliburton's trade value was nowhere near where it is now. Sacramento didn't have to do anything. Instead, they made a trade that is purposely sticking them in the middle to lower end of the Western Conference. I do not think that is a great place to be at all. The San Antonio Spurs are in a great situation now. They have Victor Wembanyama, so I'm sure they wouldn't change anything. However, of course, getting Wemby was far from any kind of guarantee back in 2018. And in 2018, Kawhi Leonard made it clear to the Spurs that he no longer wanted to play on their team. And so San Antonio, instead of embracing a rebuild and looking to get young talent back, plus a ton of picks, chose to trade Kawhi to the Raptors for DeMar DeRozan. This trade is simply baffling. And the results showed themselves right in front of our faces immediately. With DeMar now on the Spurs, they became that middle of the pack team that we've talked about a lot in this video. As if we're just breaking this down honestly, they traded a legitimate superstar who could carry a team to an NBA championship for a lesser player in DeMar, an all-star, but not a superstar. No disrespect meant for DeMar, but after this trade, in 2019, the Spurs won 48 games and lost in the first round of the playoffs. That was the best thing that came out of this, a first round playoff loss. As following that season, the Spurs won 32 games, 33 games, and 34 games, finally realized this was not going to work. And then after delaying the inevitable rebuild for four years, they decided to tank. So Spurs fans had four years of their lives wasted with a team that was as middle tier as it comes. They did get Wemby though, so it luckily all worked out for them. For the Toronto Raptors, I'm taking my own leap of faith as this trade did just happen this year. However, Pascal Siakam has been great for the Indiana Pacers. He's been a great, consistent player for a long time. This year, he averaged 21.3 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 3.7 assists per game, as Indiana has happily paired him up with Tyrese Halliburton. If the Raptors wanted to trade Pascal, they could have done so in the past few seasons and gotten a much better return. Personally, as I've said in this video, that adds to a bad trade for me. If you are now trading a player at the wrong time, that is your own mistake as a front office. The Raptors went from one of the most bright and promising young teams in the NBA to a team that sunk to near the bottom of the East this year, and in this trade, they got really no good young players in return. Bruce Brown is a solid role player. Kyra Lewis, though, averages 3.8 points per game. Jordan Nawara puts up 7.9 points a game. All-star level players such as Pascal Siakam are not easy to come by. The Pacers have done a great job in acquiring two now in Hal Burden and Pascal. The Raptors, like a lot of teams on this list, are not a free agent destination team. Trading Pascal when he was at his lowest in terms of trade value is very likely to turn out to be tremendously bad for them. They basically gave an all-star talent here for next next to nothing. We have two teams left, and I did say the Kings were the most controversial trade on this list, but maybe this is the most controversial trade. As when trading away Rudy Gobert, it seemed like everyone was on Utah's side. Rudy, for whatever reason, is the most hated man in the NBA. But if we're being realistic, he's about to win his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. And in Minnesota, there is no doubt about the impact he has made on that team. The Minnesota Timberwolves, a team no one expected to be near the top of the West, became the three seed in the Western Conference this season. Even with the Carl Anthony Towns injury, as Rudy finished the year first in defensive rating, first in defensive win shares, and fifth in offensive rating. Again, Rudy's impact cannot be denied. The Utah Jazz did not have to trade Rudy. For Donovan Mitchell, they got back an all star in Lowry Markinen. For the current defensive player of the year in Rudy, the best player they got back is Walker Kessler, who, after a promising year one, seemingly regressed in year two and averaged just 8.1 points and 7.5 rebounds per game. With the Minnesota Timberwolves near the top of the Western Conference now, too, the multiple picks that Utah will get will likely all be in the mid to deep 20s. Utah has made themselves into a middle of the pack team that is not a free agent destination, and I think Rudy's impact on the Wolves is speaking for itself. Finishing off this list, we have one of the worst trades, as the Washington Wizards may have handed the Boston Celtics a championship this year. Kristaps Porzingis has become one of the NBA's biggest storylines this season. Finally playing for the right type of system, he has been unstoppable, and Boston is headed into the playoffs as the NBA Finals 
favorites according to Vegas. The package that Washington got in return here is gross. It's so bad. Daniel Gallinari would have been a great get eight years ago. The Wizards did use him and Mike Muscala to go out and get Marvin Bagley, who has been underwhelming slash a bust everywhere he has played. Washington also got Julian Phillips, who they moved to the Bulls for two second round picks. And Tyus Jones is a solid role player, but that's really the best they got. They got a solid role playing point guard for Kristaps Porzingis. Washington did not need to make this move. They felt their hand was forced because Porzingis could leave in the off season. However, that max contract money for Porzingis very well could have spoken to him. And on top of all of this, we have yet again another situation where a front office could have traded a player when his trade value was high. Last season, Porzingis would have gotten a much better haul, but instead they waited until this year to trade a 28 year old all-star level talent for next to nothing. If you're going to commit to the tank, at least get some young talent and picks back. It was the Boston Celtics who got a first round pick out of this deal. And so there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are still here, please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. And thank you for still being here. And I also think you'll really like this video we recently did on Luka Doncic or this video we did on Isaiah Thomas that actually goes way more into depth on the Kyrie Irving trade that was talked about in this video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. Have an awesome day and peace.